Hi everyone, thanks for clicking on the video today. So one of the best products that I have ever purchased for both this channel as well as my life in general has been the DJI Osmo Pocket. Its convenient size, its wide selection of functions and overall smooth footage has really opened up new ways to capture life's moments as well as provide attractive B-roll for some of my video productions. Now DJI recently released an update for the Osmo Pocket and there are a couple of improvements that I personally welcome. So let's take a look at them. The Osmo Pocket offers so much in such a compact package, but there have been a couple of things that have always bothered me about it. One of them has been the inability to start the Pocket while having the Freewell wide angle filter installed on it. On my Osmo Pocket, most of the time, I have this filter installed, or if I don't have that on, I usually have an ND filter on there. Now having to remove the filter off of the Osmo Pocket, it's not a huge inconvenience, but it is an inconvenience nonetheless. And the more often that you have to remove a filter, especially one of this size, the greater the chance of losing it. So this most recent update to the Osmo Pocket firmware allows you to boot the Osmo Pocket with a filter on it. So this is what used to happen when you would start the Osmo Pocket with any filter on it, in particular, the Freewell wide angle one. And now with the update that was released on December 10th of 2019, the Pocket starts and calibrates with no trouble at all. That seems like such a minor fix, but it allows you to store and transport your Osmo Pocket with the filter on, and this mitigates the chance of losing it. And I have lost it many times. Thankfully, I've found it every time, but it's very frustrating when you can't find something this small. So for me, this is the most welcome update with this firmware, but there's another one that I think a lot of people have been asking for, but they have improved the phase detection autofocus even more. Now they did that back in September of this year, but now again with this one. Okay, so first I'm going to show you the autofocus, the phase detection autofocus with the previous firmware version. I'll put that version right here on the screen. Uh, but what I want you to pay attention to is right now it's focused on my face. I do not have face tracking on. And I just want you to pay attention to this little clock back here as I move out of the frame. So let's go ahead and focus on the clock. And there it is. I'm back to my face. Clock. Focused. Face on and one more time and there okay so a little challenging here kind of low light I got a little bit of filtered light coming in from a cloudy day the picture window here uh, but relatively pretty low light so let's head outside and see how the previous version does outside okay so now we're outside we're testing the old version of the firmware um, still not great lighting conditions, but it's a little brighter than it was in the house. So right now it's focused on my face. Again, no face tracking. So let's go ahead and look at the little Christmas tree in the background. And back to my face. Christmas tree. And face. And one more time. And back to the face. Okay, so let's compare. Let's update to the new firmware and see how it does. Okay, so now we have the new firmware installed and I'm in relatively the same position. I'm not sure if it's exactly right, but let's watch the clock again. So right now focused on my face, no face tracking. And back to the face. Clock. face and clock. Now looking at my screen, it doesn't look like it's any faster than it was before I updated, but let's head outside and see if that makes any difference. Okay, here we are outside, newest firmware, and right now focused on my face, and let's go for the Christmas tree back here. And back to the face. Christmas tree, face, and one more time, okay, so I won't really be able to tell until I put it on the computer. To me, it doesn't look like it's much better, but maybe it is, so let's check it out. Okay, I want to try one more thing. What I noticed when I just watched it again on my screen is that Going from near to far, it's not improved, but it is a little bit improved when it's focusing 
from far to near. So as soon as I move into the frame, it locks onto my face just like that. I said, so I think that's improved, but I wanna check it out here again with some writing in the background on the camper there where it says Eagle. So right now focused on my face, I'm gonna move out of the way and see how fast it gets to the Eagle. And face. Eagle. Face. And one more time. Okay, so I think that's maybe a better test because I'm a little bit further away from the camper than I was from the Christmas tree, but we'll check it out and I'll give you my uh, final thoughts. Okay, so I watched them again. I watched the uh, camper one that I just did, the Christmas trees and the ones inside. And it looks like to me, there really isn't much improvement when it's focusing from near to far. But as far as focusing from far to near, it's a little bit better, it's a little bit faster. And so that's what I found in my testing. Now maybe you'll find something different, but, uh, but I tried it again and again. And to me, that's what it looks like. So in my testing, I did find it to be a little bit better. It hasn't reached Sony level autofocus, but honestly, I've never been really frustrated with the autofocus on the Osmo Pocket since last September. I did look back at some footage that I got this summer with the Osmo Pocket, and it is definitely better now. But as far as from September to here, I really don't notice that big of a difference. Big picture wise, it is way better than it was when it was first released. That was one of the biggest reasons that I had so much hate for this little camera was the autofocus was terrible at launch. But now, honestly, I don't think it needs to be any better. And finally, with this update, some people were having some red tinted noise when they were recording in decentralized mode. This update fixes that. Now I've never had that issue when recording and I couldn't reproduce that issue yesterday before I updated, but if you've had that, just know that it is supposedly fixed. So I'm currently putting together a video that highlights the best things that I've purchased for my video productions, both for this channel as well as for potential clients. Now, spoiler alert, the Osmo Pocket is towards the top of this list. This little camera actually helped me get my foot in the door for producing some marketing videos for a local business. And for me, someone who hasn't done any kind of thing like that, but I want to, that's huge. And this tiny pocket size camera made it possible. And also I've used this thing just to add a little bit of B-roll to some of my YouTube videos. So yes, I do love it. It has made my videos better and it continues to improve with these little updates. If you've been thinking about getting one and you're kind of on the fence and you want my opinion, I have no reservations at all for recommending it. And if you watch this video right up here next, you'll see how it actually has become my favorite vlogging setup with just a couple of additions. I will say that if you do have an Osmo Pocket and you don't yet have the Freewell wide angle lens, this thing is a must have, especially if you're gonna be doing any vlogging at all. This little filter makes the Osmo Pocket the perfect vlogging camera in my opinion. And now you don't even have to remove it off of the camera anymore. As always, product links are in the description below for everything that I talked about today. Hit that thumbs up on your way out if I give you anything of value. Subscribe if this is your first time here. I'd love to have you join the community. Have a good one and we'll see you next time.